Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. This is a part three. You already know why you're here. Here are the top 10 dark discoveries made by submarines. Let's do it. Kicking off the list at number 10, SS Garisopa. We'll kick off this deep sea part three with a shipwreck. Whenever it comes to underwater stuff, I think I have thalassophobia. These were hard to look at and look into, rather. I got chills looking at these photos, honestly. The SS Garisopa was once a thriving British cargo ship. Back in 1941, during World War II, the cargo ship was en route, returning from India, carrying a pretty nice amount of silver. It was a lot of silver, an, an alarming amount of silver. A storm rolled in, so the captain made a quick decision knowing what was on board to avoid the rough waters as much as possible. So the ship changed direction and started heading towards Ireland. Again, this was 1941 during World War II, so not a great time to head that direction. The ship was spotted by a German plane and a U-boat later claimed the lives of the SS Garisopa's 85 passengers. News traveled quickly and once the war came to an end, a few divers checked out the area. There was nothing. Now fast forward to 2011, Odyssey Marines team found the ship. 14,000 feet below the surface, surrounded by just pure darkness. The team kept around 80% of the treasure found, and the rest went to Her Majesty's treasury. In case you were wondering, there was around $150 million worth of treasure found. Yeah, if you can do it, then go, grab it, sure. It's like one of those things where someone's like, hey, you want $150 million, go into this deep, dark, scary thing. Would you do it? No, my answer is no. Number nine, Ram's Horn Squid. This little squishy dude was discovered around 3,000 feet below the surface, and scientists cannot stop talking about the way he moves. Look at him, he looks like a really slow submarine, which is pretty amazing when you think about the uh, Schmitz Ocean ROV that's down there getting this footage. It's also a submarine, how funny is that? He's looking at him, he's looking at them, they're like, what? He's like, what? They're all just both wiggling, trying to balance each other out. His body acts like a submarine's ballast does. Fluids and gases shift around, and in return, this little guy can float up and down whilst wiggling his toes. Look at him. I never thought a squid would be cute until now. Didn't know that was a possibility, yet here we are. Part three, most amazing, cute squid. Number eight, Catherine Sullivan. Not really a deep sea discovery, but I mean, when talking about all these discoveries, you gotta ask, who goes down there? Who does the thing, right? When an entertainer wins an Oscar, Emmy, Tony, and Grammy, we call that an EGOT. Fun little title only a handful of artists can claim. But what about somebody who's been to both space and the deepest part of our Earth? What do we call them? Well, so far, them is just one individual. Her name's Catherine Sullivan. The former NASA astronaut decided to change up directions for this trip, so she joined Victor Viscavo on one of his eight trips to the deepest known point on on Earth. July 7th, 2020, Catherine Sullivan officially became the first person to do both. Go out there and then down there. That's crazy. Your Fitbit's like, what are you doing? What's happening? How many steps is this? What can we call this impressive title? He got a deep got? A deep got go-getter? A deep go-getter? Yeah, you're a deep go-getter. That sounds awful. We're doing our best here. Maybe part four will have a fun name. It's impressive. It's so impressive my ears hurt thinking about all these commutes. Bravo. Hats off to you. Number seven, holy grail of shipwrecks. Okay, back to shipwrecks. It's hard to read up on these shipwrecks sometimes. Times, well, all the time, because on one hand, it's fascinating to discover parts of our history we thought was once lost forever. Of course, we find tons of treasure that's always fun and noteworthy, but we're also exploring the scene of a horrible wreck every single time. It's quite grim, not on paper. In 1708, the San Jose Galleon was heading to Spain from Colombia, but when the British attacked, the San Jose sank to the ocean floor and nearly all 600 crew members lost their lives. Yeah, dark history. In 2015, the ship was found with around 17 to 22 billion dollars worth of plundered valuables. See, back in the 80s, Gloka Mora Company claimed they had found the ship. Columbia was lacking the financial and technological resources to dive down and actually get it, so they agreed to give GMC 35% of the findings. In 1984, they then handed the rights over to an American company, Sea Search Armada. Then the game changed. Since then, and still to this day, legal battles have been unfolding over this lost treasure. COVID delayed it quite a bit, so if you can hold your breath for a really long time, it's still waiting there. No one knows what to do with it yet. I'm like, see ya, be right back. Number six, the Vasa shipwreck. Back in 1628, the Vasa sunk within 20 minutes of setting sail and it claimed the lives of 30 souls on board. How tragic is that? Only 20 minutes and it was gone. The Swedish Navy launched the ship August 10th, 1628 and it was once considered a high-tech warship, even referred to as spectacular. So what happened? How did this thing sink in 20 minutes? That's crazy. Well, the first rush of wind caught it off guard and it swayed a bit. The second rush of wind sank it. There's gotta be more. There was a crowd around and everything to send it off, but the 64 bronze cannons that were installed during the rushed process of building the ship were too heavy. That's why it sank. And the lack of oxygen in the water allowed for its rediscovery to continue its story. The Vasa was built with carvings all around the wood. Carvings centered around the king at the time, King Gustav II. So when the wreck was rediscovered in 1961, 95% of the wood was still intact. So it still tells the story. Number five, under the ice. This dark discovery was pretty recent. Recent as in October, 2021, the Hakon Project is one I would never sign up for personally, but I'm surprised it's taken this long to do something along these lines.
designs. The Hagon Project is a group of around 30 scientists. They teamed up to send a deep sea robot 13,000 feet below the icy surface of the Arctic Ocean. This was the first time we got to see the hidden volcanic vents that have been hiding for centuries. Because obviously it's that deep and that cold and now we have the resources and people who are brave enough to go and camp out in the Arctic to go explore. That's crazy. Number four, ancient Greek shipwreck. I remember hearing about this back in 2018, so I'm excited I get to throw it on a list. The oldest shipwreck discovered in the Black Sea. It looks like it sank 50 years ago, but actually this ship is from 400 BC. It's an ancient Greek trading vessel and it's not very large, but somehow this thing is very mighty. 2,400 years later, over a mile below the surface, the lack of oxygen again actually preserved this ship. That's why it looks not ancient. John Adams, principal investigator with the Black Sea Marine Archaeology Project, describes the findings as something he never thought was even possible. Yeah, more than fair. That long ago, like we're still trying to figure out the pyramids. We're like, oh my god, this thing's just chilling there the whole time. Just a fish is staring at it. This discovery changed what we knew about seafaring in the ancient world. The oldest intact shipwreck known to mankind. That's not a bad title. Another 2,000 years, we'll find nothing but plastic on the bottom of our oceans. Number three, underwater river. We've heard about this one at some point, I'm sure, but how is this even a real thing? How is this possible? What are we looking at? What is this? Back in 2016, researchers working in the Black Sea found these very strong currents. Currents of water flowing at the bottom of the sea, like its own river, almost. If this 115 foot deep river was on land instead of, well, under the Black Sea, it would be ranked number six in the world for the amount of volume alone that's constantly rushing through it. So pretty impressive. The river carries heavy sediments along the seafloor, hence why it makes those grooves over time. And yeah, over time, those currents carve out their own path, and now it's massive and extremely powerful and unstoppable. But luckily for us, you need a deep sea rover to take a good look, so you're not gonna fall in anytime soon. Number two, deep waste. I mentioned some deep sea plastic on this channel before, but this 2021 discovery is just a new low, pun intended. Right off the coast of LA, hiding around 4,000 feet below the ocean's surface, sitting there for quite a long time were literal barrels of garbage, just waste. The plume of evil coming off of these things also, it looks like a nuclear wasteland. Probably because it is a literal nuclear wasteland. How horrible is that? There weren't 30 or 40 of these barrels also, in case you're wondering, there were thousands. Around 27,000 were found. Two weeks of searching with subs. What a sad expedition that must have been. Oh my. These barrels were dropping into the ocean around 1947 to around 1961. That's the window of time. You'd think after barrel 5,000, somebody would be like, ah, this feels wrong. I don't know. And finally, number one, beneath a glacier. We had to end this part three on some new footage from the bottom of an Antarctic glacier. And this glacier also, in case you're wondering, is the size of Florida. So if you're imagining like a big ice cube, it's a bit bigger than that, just a little bit. This is like finding the bottom of a continent. This thing is massive. And we set a rover underneath all of it. How scary is that? If it were to collapse, our sea levels would rise 10 feet, just to give you an idea of how big it is. And in 2019, researchers drilled 2,300 feet right through the Thwaites Glacier and dropped a robot with a camera down and then they just roamed around. And they saw this. Hold your breath. This is the first time we've ever seen the grounding zone of a massive glacier. There's only one meter of space between the bottom of the glacier and the rocky seafloor. Could you go down there? I don't think I could. I would swim underneath it and pretend like I'm lifting it up, you know? Just kidding. I wouldn't even get into the submarine to go down this hole. Not a chance. Also, can we not drill through a glacier the size of Florida? Just sounds like a bad idea. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe leave this project alone. Guys, I've been Taylor McWaters. That's been our list and we'll see you next time, hopefully for a part four. Stay safe. Peace.